Uh, absolutely loving this conversation. But for now, though, it's time to kick off things. And I'd officially like to welcome you to the Culinary Hotline Bling Ting Ting Ting. Oh, yes, this morning we are honored to have bronze medalist of the IKA Culinary Olympics in Stuttgart and the only chef from Africa, might I add. He goes by the name of Peter Malan and he's known for his African infusion foods and is about to share some easy recipes that we can all achieve from our homes. Now, if you do have any questions and especially your culinary concerns, then you can join in on the conversation and the discussion by sending your voice notes to our WhatsApp line, 063-408-8863. But let us dive into the world of this Olympian. Ah, Brother, it is an absolute pleasure to have you, you so here. Much. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I heard it's uh, International Mother Tongue Day today. Yeah, I, what's your mother uh, tongue? Afrikaans. Okay, like it. I always wanted to say Sak Sarl. Sak Sarl? Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you intro someone and you're like building them up so much and you feel a little bit modest and you say Sak uh, Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I don't want you to be modest because we really are proud of you, man. Oh, you're a podium you so finisher at an incredible competition. Before we even get into the dish, mm. talk to me about what is this all about? How did yes. you represent us on the big stage? You can probably prep your dish a lot because yes, I know okay. we've got a lot to do here. 100%. So, so uh, initially when I decided to enter the Olympics, it was something that I always wanted to do as a chef. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately this year, we, we couldn't send an official South African team. And I heard that, you know, you can enter as an independent, individual, yeah. you know, independent competition, uh, individual competitor. And I decided to do that. And uh, at this stage, I was working in, in Ghana, or I'm still working in Ghana. And I decided, let, let me do something different. And I go with West African food to the Olympics. Ooh. And uh, it, was, it was quite interesting because it's never been done before at the Olympics. So the judges don't know African flavors. And I think we're so rich. You know, if you talk about Pan-African and West mm. African flavors, mm. we just have the most amazing food in the world. And it's it's tough that we really need to showcase it. So, so, so you had an opportunity to do that showcase of yeah. African food to the world. That is an honor and incredible thing. Absolutely. I'm assuming what's happening right now is a part of that in inspiration. Yes. What dish are we making today? So today, and uh, all the Afrikaans and mensen my vergewe. Yeah. But I'm doing vegan. Oh! So, so we're doing three Whoa. vegan dishes, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to cause controversy here. <laughs> but I think what you were discussing earlier yeah. on air is the fact that we as South Africans are so used to including meat in our meals. Absolutely. It's traditional, it's custom, it's part of our heritage. Yeah. But I think a big reason for that also is the fact that we aren't too educated on healthy and good alternatives. Yes. And I think the fact that you've been diving into the world of Ghana, you've been living there for the last few years, so yeah. you have a great insight into how to incorporate these flavors. And Absolutely. Especially someone from your background. <laughs> this is even this is even uh, even better. So I'm loving what you're doing here. I'm loving the fact that we have so much color here that you've already included. Yes. Take me through what's been going on already. So uh, basically, here yeah, we're doing the red red. So that's the most famous West African vegan bean stew. That If, if you talk to vegans, they know. West Africa and Red Red. Okay, it's up on the together. list. And Absolutely. is this something you used in the competition as well? Yes, so I did a deconstructed version of, of this, a more refined version that we're doing now. I'm showing wow. the viewers at home how to just do the normal Red Red. Uh, traditionally, there would be a little bit of plantain inside it. And okay. obviously in SA, we don't get plantain regularly. You can use a dried plantain chip if you okay. want to get that flavor in there. And I'm assuming something like a banana wouldn't work here, right? No. A very different texture <laughs> to a plantain. Very, right? very it might different. look similar. They, they, I mean, they got a little bit of a similarity in taste, but it's, it's, it's very small. Um, and you need to cook a plantain. You can't just eat it. Uh, from there, I know... Uh, I tried to eat it <laughs> once. Let me tell you now, here's another calorie conundrum I can solve it's, you. Don't try it. It's, it's a very unpleasant, <laughs> unpleasant experience. Yeah. The ingredients we're currently using, though, I think it's all available in South Africa. Absolutely. Right? Obviously, apart from the plantain, which we have a substitute for. Yes. This is easy pantry stuff, and I think a lot of South Africa can jump on this yeah. quite quickly, actually. Yes. Let me go through it quickly. So we got uh, just red onions in here. Uh -huh. We got a mix of chilies. The, the traditional recipe would say, habanero or Whoa, the scotch the bonnet. One. But I like to just add a little bit of bird's eye just to bring a little bit more of that earthy African flavor into balance, it also. Yeah. And we got paprika, we got fresh tomatoes. I'm going to do some tomato paste that goes in there. Salt and pepper. And then we got beans. Uh, you can do, traditionally, it's black-eyed black -eyed peas. Uh -huh. I just got the traditional white beans that we can buy here. Pre-soaked it a bit. We're going to add that to the mixture. If you can just smell it already, it's starting to just come alive. Some. 
You got the garlic, the oh, onions, yeah. all that going. Yeah, and it's it's hearty already. It's so hearty. Yeah, put like so only hearty. half or less than half the ingredients in, but it's already giving and feeling like I've transported myself somewhere to the west of Africa. When, when, when I started in West Africa, I was having <laughs> red bread like every second day oh, for it? lunch. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just so uh, heartwarming, you know, like I'm, I'm used to like Oma's poiki course. Yes, yes, you know, yes, and, yes, and, yes. And this is one of those dishes that's so similar to it. Okay. So it was just absolutely amazing. So and, and I see... Uh, Obviously, all over the world, we have different taste profiles. When it comes to, let's say, Ghana specifically, yeah. do they like to use a lot of the spices, a lot of the hot profiles? I see you've got chilies. Absolutely. You mentioned the habaneros. You mentioned paprika as well. Yeah. Is that a big uh, um, sort of a, a profile in that sort of taste range? So much. Um, in Ghana, when something doesn't have chili in it, they say there's no flavor. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so uh, you know, you can turn it down a little bit more for the South African yeah. palate. Although we do like chili here, not as much as West Africa. Well, unless if you encase it in maybe. Maybe certain parts of Durban, they absolutely love it. They <laughs> yes. might rival the Ghanaians. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, but like I say, the, the Scotch, Scotch bonnet pepper is like something that uh, they blend and they use it in absolutely everything from breakfast right through to dinner in all the meals. Okay. And I think the people are extremely healthy because of that. Well, maybe, maybe there's a secret here that we don't know about. I, I might do some more research into this and get back to you on yeah, that one. Yeah, so, okay. so if you see here the color that's that's happening right here, that's right. that's the red red. So that's basically the canola oil, traditionally palm oil that they will use inside it. And that's just going to bring all those flavors together that we have in here. That's tomato puree, uh, paprika, the chili, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then a famous thing in West Africa is to use the stock boulon or the stock cubes. Okay, so okay, we already yes, did yes. some little bit of stock cubes here. We did a vegetarian one, um, nice. obviously to stay with the vegan Staying theme. Staying authentic, very yeah. much done. And we're just gonna, all that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit of this water and allow it to cook off. So this is becoming like a, a soupy, stewy, brothy type of Absolutely. A sensation. This is probably why you got addicted to this so quickly because I can I can clearly not blame you either, man. This is it's, ticking the boxes with so many things. You got texture, you got nutrients, we've got flavor, you got, we've got all inspiration, we've got color. Come on, it doesn't get better than this. I can see why we ended up on the podium, bro. <laughs> Great choice taking this to the rest of the world and representing Africa. I Thank you it. so much. So, so we just got to leave this on the side and we're going to let it do its magic. And then in the meantime, I'm just going to go through on the views. We had some potatoes there. What I did yeah. earlier is, is that we peeled the potatoes and then um, chopped them up. We blended it with a little bit of water. And we just used the juice um, and dry. I'm busy drying it in the oven. What do you mean, like the juice of the potato? The juice of the potato. The, oh, wow. Let me take okay. it out and then I'll show. It's on here. Waste, not want, not. I like that. Yeah, so that's just the. Uh, Careful of your hands there, it's not too hot. Uh, there we go. Oh, this is very interesting. I'm dying to okay. see this. All right. So if you see Whoa. what we have here, mm. it's a, it looks like a little bit of a. Almost like a potato glass currently. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it in strips and we're going to deep fry it and then it's going to become a taco shell. Whoa, are you joking? No, 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 really. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, crazy things are happening right now in the kitchen. And of course, Peter Milan is not going anywhere. We are busy making a red Ghanaian absolute delicacy. That is something I have been dying to try. We're almost at the end there, but we're going to carry on this meal. So don't go anywhere, Mzanzi. But don't forget also, if you have any questions, any culinary concerns, come through right now. We've got an Olympian, a professional, an international <laughs> chef here to serve you and answer any questions that you may have. And we're going to carry on. On this recipe right now it's already smelling incredible and it's only gonna get better mm. nicely done man it's my feel -good show. welcome back to the kitchen for another installment of the culinary hotline bling ding, ding, ding. now i'm back in the kitchen with Culinary Olympian, award-winning Chef Peter Milan. You see, he can't, he's not even distracted with what I'm saying right now. Man's working. Man's already busy with the dish we're going to be putting together, together right yes. now. Chef, what are we making? So we're busy uh, uh, plating that red red that we started earlier today. Mm -hmm. So that's the Ghanaian bean stew, just to uh, remind everyone. And the little potato skins that we did was just the potato juice. Can I, can I, can we hold him up? Can yes. I just, uh, yes. Because I love when we see vegetables get showcased like this this yeah. where we like you think potatoes you think mash you think chips you think like whatever but you don't think about turning it into taco a taco shop, shop. Yeah. especially <laughs> using starch yeah. which is pretty pretty amazing and this looks <laughs> so crispy i am tempted right now just to, but i won't but i won't okay <laughs> the beans look so good and smell amazing thank you i do I like can't... 
the quantity of the beans that you made. Yeah, yeah. Because I know the ingredients that you got in there, those beans are just going to pick up more flavor, oh, develop absolutely. so much over time. You know, the red red uh, becomes exactly like you say, the best, the longer it stands, you can keep it in the fridge. It's a perfect lunch, depending on what time of the day you're having lunch, because it's beans. Like, <laughs> you know what? You know what? Beans. Any time of the day. Any time of the Any day. Any time of the day, okay. And then uh, while I'm um, finishing this up, I'm just having a little bit store-bought guacamole. You are allowed to go to the store and buy stuff already pre-made. And then uh, I just have a little bit of beetroot hummus that we mixed a little bit earlier. And then on the side here, I'm busy with our second dish, okay. keeping it vegan. So uh, I don't know if there's an official thing for it, but I call it vegan risotto. I use oats, quick, quick cook, uh, cooking oats. All right. And I make a risotto with that most fantastic one that you'll ever have with mushrooms, just to have that exotic flavors going and uh, very earthy flavors. So I have onions, garlic, a little bit of olive oil going there, and then I'm gonna add just a bunch of exotic mushrooms, oats, coconut milk, a little bit of cashew butter, and then a little bit of sun-dried tomato, pesto, just bring it all together, dish that up nicely. So that will be our main course. So we got our tacos. Mm -hmm. Then for dessert, I'm oh, making hibiscus coconut tart. I love hibiscus. Yes. And so you spend a lot of time in Ghana. Yes, yes. Talk to me about some of the, the ingredients that we've seen here today that yeah. has been influenced by the cuisine in Ghana. Oh, yes. so many of them. I mean, if you think about the mushrooms, they just have the most amazing wild mushrooms uh -huh. just because of the humidity in, in, in Ghana. And uh, oyster mushrooms that looks at, look as big as like a 500 gram steak. Whoa. So that's why I'm so pro-vegan because you can take that huge uh, 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 mushroom and just give it a very nice like piri piri marinade and all that flavors just goes inside it and you have this almost moist, uh, uh, juicy steak flavor that goes with it. Sounds so and good. When you give it a char on the braai, it's excellent. Yeah. And you said pro-vegan and I think a lot of times when people see a lot of plant-based meals, when yeah. there's a word vegan attached to it, then they immediately kind of like just go, mm, I'm not vegan, I should not eat that. But what <laughs> you're doing is more celebration of vegetables, which I absolutely love. Absolutely. And it's not, so, you won't miss the meat. Those beans are, can you say, look very meaty. We spoke about the mushrooms as well. And what you're doing is you're adding so much texture and color to it. How can you not be enticed? Because I'm seeing all these vibrant colors of the green yeah. and with the beetroot hummus. It looks absolutely amazing. You, and we use that to, to finish our tacos, right? Yes, yes. We're going to finish our tacos with that now. I'm just getting our mushrooms on the side here. But exactly what you're saying. I mean, I'm a, I said earlier today, I'm a, I'm a Laafeld boyki. Uh, you know, originally born in the free state, went to Pupalanga, it was, you know, it's flesh eaters, not flesh eaters. So for me to, you know, be pro-vegan these days, or like at least two, three, three days a week, try to be vegan. If we look at world trends, we, mm -hmm. need to, we need to consider from a chef perspective how important it is to look at the trends because it has a very, very big impact on our environment, you know, and we need to be pro it. If we're not going to be pro it, people is not going to follow us and start being more adventurous with You it. are the influencer. Absolutely, you absolutely. You are the influencer. Okay, chef, so let me, let's swap sides. So you can, yeah. okay, so you're doing the oats right now, which is going to yes. be, which is replacing our arborio rice in the risotto. That's exactly. going to become, same thing, it's going to release some starch, it's going to change its texture, it's going to give us that like, almost porridge, I'm going to say it like, almost porridge like consistency, yes. but I'm, I can imagine you're going to keep some of the texture in the oat there as well. Absolutely, so, and we just have some coconut cream that I add to it. So I was going to ask, we've made this vegan, and we've yeah. done that by, we, you said you're going to use cashew nut butter. Cashew nut butter. Which gives you that cheesiness, slight cheesiness and texture creaminess. Absolutely. And what else have we done to make it vegan? We, we, we have the sun-dried tomato pesto that just gives it an additional, I want to say, almost depth in, mm -hmm. in it. And uh, we've removed all the... I think the, the most important thing for me here to showcase is to say that, like you say, the cashew butter, uh, the coconut cream, all those elements that we're using replaces the butter element, the cream element, and, uh, and the parmesan, parmesan cheese. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. And it's so quick to make. I mean, if, you, if you're thinking of express dinner tonight at home, this is 10 minutes. Whoa, Done. 10 minutes. Done. And you can serve it up. If you have quick oats on there and oats for dinner, I, I'm telling you, you if you try it for the first time, I'm you're there. gonna enjoy it. You're I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> South Africa, don't know anyway. When we come back with Chef Peter, we're gonna be dressing our beautiful tacos, and you're gonna be seeing what an oat risotto looks like, and it's smelling amazing. We'll be doing some testing. Don't get away. Stay tuned for more color outline bling. Ting, ting, ting. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Call 
can I sing back to you? I'm going to throw back to you again. Can we get the biggest ting, ting, ting from the Good Up FM team? Can you do that for me? Back to call. It's the Calgary Hotline Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Very nice, very nice. For that, you're going to get a dessert. You're going to get one. You're all going to have to share it, though. <laughs> That's OK? That's, that's cool, that's cool. Chef, we're back in the kitchen. Yes. And as they said, it's a Calgary Hotline Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Love uh, it. OK, it's dessert time. Yes. It is, so let me just tell you, before, we, before I tell you what we're making, I've been having my nose over this pot because it smells so delicious. <laughs> Coconutty, almost like booba. I want to say there's something almost like, like milli meal ish almost just, it's the comfort of it all. Oh, yes. What are we making? So we're making a, a coconut hibiscus tart, and it's so easy to make. Um, it's also vegan. This is just some vegan coconut biscuits that I, that I got from the market. I just blended it up, almost like when you would do a, um, let's say, a fridge cake or, uh -huh. a, you know, the traditional cremora tart. Yes. But this is just a, a vegan, tropical version of it. So we got vegan condensed milk um, that we use coconut and then coconut milk, and then the wonder that we were talking about, uh -huh. agar agar. Uh, you like, tell me about that because, yes, yes, because we're talking vegan, Yeah, yeah. and obviously we're going to try to set this, and that's where the agar agar comes in, but where does Absolutely. it come from? So agar agar is from seaweed. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a replacement for gelatine. So obviously if you're vegan, you can't have gelatine because it's animal-based. And this is a plant-based. And what I love about agar agar is when you start playing around with it, it's so versatile because you can actually put uh, jellies and gels on a plate and it withstands heat quite, quite more than the opposite, uh, of, opposite jelly. of a jelly. That's yeah, so, amazing. So when you do like a, like a proper, let's say, let's talk about meat. If you do like a proper, mm -hmm. if you want to do like a little uh, uh, cubes of mint jelly on your lamb, for instance. Uh, no, yeah, no, no, no. just to, to keep that shape. It will keep the shape um, for quite some, so a long time. So we put a little bit of agar agar in this. And that's what's given it. us. It's a, so yes. I'm going to pull a Raul the morning. My favorite thing about Raul in the kitchen is that when he sees something that he doesn't know, he's unfamiliar with, he says, can I taste it? <laughs> Whether it comes from like a semi-toxic plant that needs to be cooked out, Raul's like, I'm, can, can I taste it? So I'm going <laughs> to taste agar agar. Here's Raul in the background. Oh, I'm going to taste some agar I, I mean, Just like that. You know what? I've seen it for years. Yes. You know what, Ryle? I'm doing this for you. Come in here. Oh, <laughs> so you, yeah, we taste this together. So you spend a lot of time at the ocean. Yes. This is agar agar, which is an extract from seaweed, which helps Ooh. set foods like gelatine. Yeah. I've been loving what they do with seaweed of late, but I've never heard of this, and I'm definitely going to taste it. It's supposed I to guys, taste like nothing. I was hoping to tell you it tastes like this. <laughs> like this. I know. Like this. <laughs> it just tastes like nothing, actually. <laughs> it tastes like your January salary. <laughs> Let me know if else I can taste, though. <laughs> we'll call you back. We'll call you back. <laughs> okay, I love that. Thank you, Raul. Always a sport. So, so we've set it, and yes. I can see there's still there's still pieces of coconut, and yes. that's because we've used flake coconut. Flake isn't coconut it? also just okay. to bring out that because we have the you know you got a, the tin flavor. Right. We, we're not right. fortunate in South yeah. Africa to have like fresh coconuts. When you're in Ghana, it's like the marulas from the low felt. It's just all over. And uh, you can just get coconut cream, coconut milk, coconut water everywhere. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, we're not so blessed. So it was out of the tin. Just to get the tin flavor out, there's nothing wrong with it. The preservation, just bring in a little bit of uh, dried coconut, and it will just break that, that flavor immediately and just give it back that tropical Absolutely. essence. So uh, in here, hibiscus, all Have the hibiscus? way from Ghana. Tell me about hibiscus in Ghana. Oh, it's because such a powerful... Because I didn't know it was a thing. It's such a huge thing. You know, we, 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 there's, a, there's a power drink there called Sobolo. And it's like a natural, almost uh, herby tea that's made out of pi uh, pineapple, ginger, the hibiscus, dried hibiscus leaves, black pepper, and nutmeg. And they put a lot of sugar in it, and it's like, I almost want to say nature's energy drink. I was going to say, is it yeah. Ghanaian? Ghanaian? <laughs> well, I almost said the brand name. Yeah, I almost the, said it also. Like. The red animal that is like a cow, that drink. <laughs> yes, but that's amazing. Yes. It's, it's vibrant, it's full of color. And it's so delicious. You it know, has this natural berry flavor to it. And um, I mean, it's, it's just growing for free on the trees. <laughs> like it's not, you know, it's just all over. So that, that's what I did there, a little bit of the hibiscus on oh, there. Oh, beautiful. And um, I, I added a little bit of the agar agar also in this just to give it a little bit of a set. And um, you can get hibiscus at, at Woolies, like in your tea. Yes, tea right. Yeah. There's like a hibiscus tropical tea. And if you can't get just the hibiscus leaves, that is also a very nice substitute to use to get that tropical flavor. And if you are looking for agar agar, if I'm not mistaken, Woolies does now sell agar yes. agar. And also something very important, if you don't, if you are halal, or if you are halal, 
Muslim. My, my producer, who is Muslim in my ear, just went, hi, bo. <laughs> if you don't consume any pork products, right, it's very important that yes. you actually look at the back of the gelatine that you buy because you get bovine and then you get pork-based um, gelatine. So have a look at that. And again, as Chef Peter said, if you are um, vegan, Please go for the agar agar root because it's amazing. It sets things beautifully. I'm still embarrassed that I just said that. My producers, I can I can hear her shaking her head up in the control room. Askis, <laughs> askis. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I love it. So it's, it's nice that you brought these tropical flavors. Yeah. And by just like experimenting and just exploring a little bit, we can find substitutes here. Absolutely. And we even spoke about um, African the African grocers, which you find all over now. So if you can you know, pop in there, get your plantains, get That's your amazing. hibiscus, go and check it out. Yeah. Chef, you brought Africa to the show this morning. I, I mean, like, that is that is what we need to do. I'm, I'm really so pro it. I, I, you know, one of the things when I was at the Olympics was, uh, some people said to me, like, be a little bit careful about the African flavors because the rest of the world is not used to it. Yeah. And it's just one thing that I said, man, this is what I do every day in Ghana. Like, I'm going to go out there and I'm Who's doing Who's not African. used to it? <laughs> You're not used to it. Yeah. I love it. So I'm going to bring some friends into the kitchen because oh. we're just tasting things. Raul de Mornay, I made you taste nothing earlier, so maybe I can make you taste a beautiful dessert where you're at. And we, like Lucy, we can find Raul's spoon so long. Here we go. Oh, yeah. oh you, where'd you come from? You had me at dessert, How, you... <laughs> <laughs> How can I even okay. say no to this, especially when you have an Olympian and actually two esteemed chefs oh. that have done the most incredible things, serving you at... Okay. A, a, Dessert like this? It's beautiful. Oh, oh, you you've okay. got everybody excited oh, Can I just Hello, some yes, spoons? Please. Are we in the right area for spoons? Yes. There we go. Here we go. Spoons. Pick a spoon. Take, take a gold we spoon. We have gold spoon, mm. brass spoons, Ooh. black spoons, silver spoons, spoon spoons, mm. teaspoons, big spoons. A teaspoon or do we need... Hi, boy. I actually said teaspoon, but we don't have teaspoons in this Let's go take Pick a different one. Okay, there, we there we go. There we go. There we go. Grab one as well. Nice. Awesome. That's fine. Let me do the final touch for you. Final touch. I just need to do the chef thing. Like you did in the competition. You know when the chefs always go up and they present their dish to the yeah, judges. Yeah. Mm. Can I ask you if you can do it in that style before our two judges? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, right. okay. Okay, so you guys first, first need to, you need to start with the, the right, the judges' feedback. Okay. So okay. first of all, you always need to thank the contestant for coming and say, <laughs> you tried your best. Okay. Well, yeah. Peter, Milan, you really did try your best. Oh. I think it was a gallant effort. I absolutely love the fact that you've incorporated some of your heritage thank into you, this chef. as well. But, of course, the proof has to be Thank in you, the chef. pudding. Absolutely. Yes, yes, so, um, Chef, I really tried today. I was under a lot of pressure, and I brought all those ingredients from Ghana for you here. Mm. Uh, I made a little bit of uh, um, uh, uh, hibiscus coconut tart for you to enjoy today, and I really hope that you will judge me fairly on it. Yeah. I we can't will promise try. fairness. Is there a way to eat this? Do we just dig in? Is just there any advice in. here? Okay. You just dig in. And Vicky van Alles? Vicky van Alles. Alright, alright. I'll say Kray on the Okay. Wow. And by the way, that what you've got on your spoon right now, Mishka's like called a kiwi berry. Be... Yeah, kiwi berry, ah. beautiful. Ralph's got one. Too. You can mm. set this, right? This is now a little bit hot. Like. Wow, wow. The what? judges are speechless. <laughs> judges, if I can get a five-second reply from both of you. Mishka, go. <laughs> Incredible. I feel... <clears throat> Let me just quickly... I know I'm only supposed to take yeah. one bite for TV, but... Oh, oh please. Ra Thank you. I have I so many right. things to discuss right now. The words brilliant, fantastic, amazing, sensational. I want to write a book on this. Wow. Oh. An entire book with 10, 11... Wow. Yes. 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 It's yes. so good. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. I am looking for... An award. Okay, wait. I found something. Okay, yes. this is the... It's the award. It's, it's the award. Oh. Okay, here we go. It's a trophy. It's a trophy. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, should have Ages, I am proud to present to you the Olympian Thank Peter you. Ballon! Thank you. Yes, please. That's how you do it. <laughs> Another successful hotline bling. <laughs> Thank you to all our friends, our family, everyone that's represented South Africa. You have turned my taste buds into something sensational. And thank you, Chef Clem Zanzi. I hope you enjoyed this one. Woo! Nailed it.